was from Adam Ireland with MMA Kansas. Thanks very much. Um, uh, I'm down here in Australia. Um, I appreciate you guys are very focused on fighting this weekend. But a quick question for John uh, John Jones. I'm not sure if you're aware, but the UFC recently announced that they're working on a huge stadium show um, in Melbourne, uh, in Australia, late next year. And you actually polled as the number one fighter that Australian fans want to see headline that card. I'm just interested to know if that's something that would be interested that you'd be interested in doing. You know, is that is that something that, that gets you excited fighting, potentially fighting down here in a stadium show? Absolutely, I would absolutely love to do it. I've uh, the only other country I've fought in was uh, Brazil, and um, and no, I'm sorry, not Brazil, Canada. And I don't really even consider that a different country. They're so close. Uh, so it would be an honor to fight in front of a different audience. And uh, I totally will be up for it. Against the right opponent, I'd do it. That's awesome to hear. And just one follow-up question on the same topic. Um, GSP is the only UFC champion to headline a stadium event. I just want to know, have you thought about doing something like that in your career as well, like headlining one of those huge events, because it's something you haven't done yet? No, my, my, uh, my real dream is not to headline in a stadium, but to headline at Madison Square Garden. I've been saying it since uh, before I was a champion, and I do believe it'll, it'll happen one day. I'm just going to stay faithful and uh, stay ready, and I believe I'll be that guy uh, when the opportunity comes. Awesome. Thanks very much, Sean, and uh, good luck to both of you this weekend. Thank you. And moving on to Heidi Singh with the fight for <laughs> Hello, thanks for the time. It seems that today we're both Jones and Cormier, but there's no potential to kind of subside the rivalry. Did you say that that's the case? Efforts for Jones. Wait, so what was what did you say? I said it seems as though this layoff that has happened between the time you were scheduled to fight up until now has kind of subsided this rivalry that was going on between you two. So would you say that that's the case? I still can't quite hear you. Okay, uh, Daniel, can you hear me on that? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, uh, basically, did the layoff help kind of subside the rivalry? I don't think so, man. I think I think the rivalry is still there, but John and I have haven't fought. We haven't fought before, so I, when I think of rivalries, man, I think of fights that or, or, or sporting events where you have people going back and forth. I think the Lakers and Celtics. I think uh, I think great trilogy fights. I think uh, football teams that are rivals that are pretty equal, you know. So we haven't fought, but in terms of of the heat between us, I don't think that's going anywhere. I just think that now you see two guys that are only six days away from fighting. Like, what's the point in us yelling and screaming at each other anymore? That, that's, that, that, that's that's done. Like, that's done. Before, it was all we could do to try and get to each other because we were so far away from the fight. The fight's only six days now. There's no point to that anymore. What's it going to do? All that arguing, all the yelling, all the name calling, it motivated me through my training. So, uh, what's the point in it anymore? It serves no more purpose. And uh, so, Joe, did you also hear that? And what was your uh, response to the question? Well, uh, I, I would have to agree. You know, right right now, um, the fight is is uh, it's here. The fight is here. Uh, there's nothing that can be said or anything that to change uh, the outcome of this fight. The, the work is done. The camp is over. And uh, for you know, for me to sit here and be unprofessional and try to insult him and come at him and get in this bicker and match to sell a few more pay-per-views, it, it's just, I don't need to. I don't need it. Um, fight's gone to sell, and, uh, and the work's already been done. Um, you know, there's a time and place for everything, and, and all the beef and all the craziness um, was appropriate. Then it motivated me. I'm sure it motivated him to have great camps. And uh, now the fight is here, and now it's time to, uh, to think. Okay, thank you. And we'll take a final question from Kel Dansby with Black Sports Online. This is for both fighters. Entering the fight, were you disappointed that it got moved back? Did it make it more difficult for you, or did the extra time help in your preparation, and do you feel you'll give the fans a better fight because of the layoff? 
I, I believe it helped me. I mean, anytime you, you get a UFC title fight, you don't necessarily want it on short notice, you know. Not that it was it was real short notice. I, I, got, I got the call nine weeks before the first fight. But at about six weeks, man, I had some family stuff I needed to do, and, and uh, I could not cancel the family stuff. So I went and did that, and I came back, and I trained with uh, Phil Davis. And after three rounds of hard sparring, I actually got tired, and I was like, man, I don't know if I'm going to add these next two rounds over the course of six weeks, five weeks. I was like, you know, that's going to be very difficult for me. And then uh, John got hurt, like, the very next day or something. So uh, then I had, like, it was like a sigh of relief. You know, I was like, now I'm going to get my title fight uh, under the right circumstances where I get a full training camp. I get to focus on it for many months, and I give myself the best opportunity to win this fight. So... For me, it's been a complete blessing. It's been a, it's been a, uh, it, w- it was a, it was a, a great turn of events. Now, the, high, the people were so excited for September, but I believe that uh, we'll give a good fight this weekend, just as we would have before. And John, same question. Uh, for me, I do believe that uh, that the fight being prolonged uh, worked in Daniel's favor, uh, but at the same time, I was ready for the fight then and I'm ready for the fight now um you know it's not like uh Daniel's got more time to train and I've been you know uh not using my time uh we both have had more time to focus on this fight than on each other and I think that's why it's going to be a great fight um you know one thing that I love about this situation is uh there is no excuse uh for his performance or my performance how uh, when we get out there you know when I fought Rampage Jackson he he hired the whole muscle farm building and he had a whole staff of people working on his body and his mind but it's like Leo Machida hired a new strength and conditioning coach and he brought in all these people everybody who fights against me they claim that it's the best camp of their career they're in the best shape of their career and that's exactly the way I want them you know to beat Daniel uh, on a short notice and for him to say you know I didn't have my camp right and man it kind of took me off surprise I don't think I was quite ready you know it, 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 it means it means everything to my legacy that he has no excuses. Thanks for you guys, man. Uh, good luck in your fight this weekend. And I now turn the conference back over to Mr. Schaller for any additional or closing remarks. Thanks, Justin. Thanks, Daniel. Thank you, Johnny Bones. We appreciate you guys jumping on the call today. To the media, thank you all. We wish you a uh, very safe and happy new year. We'll see you Wednesday at the Open Workout. MGM, don't forget, that is right next to the sports book on the casino floor. Have a great night, everyone.